Hi ladies and gentlemen, in this video I'm going to describe some types of chemical reactions. I'm going to identify combustion reactions, synthesis reactions, decomposition reactions, displacement reactions, single and double displacement. Welcome to Schooler, your online school. You may check your understanding by solving the end of video questions. And good luck. I will start by synthesis reactions. Synthesis reactions are reactions that they have only one product regardless of the number of the reactants. Here is an example, the reaction of hydrogen gas with oxygen gas to produce water liquid. Here since we have only one product, so this is a synthesis reaction. Don't forget to balance the hydrogen atoms, we have to multiply the water molecules by 2 and the hydrogen molecules by 2. If you still find it difficult to balance chemical equations, you may check the description for a useful link. Another example, the reaction of magnesium with oxygen gas to produce magnesium oxide. To balance it, we multiply the magnesium oxide by 2 and then magnesium by 2. And here also, this is a synthesis reaction since we have one product only. Two more examples, the reaction of calcium oxide with water to give calcium hydroxide and carbon dioxide with water to give carbonic acid. Here also, these two examples are synthesis reactions since we have only one product on each. One thing to mention before we move to another type is that the products of the first two reactions are called binary compounds since each is made up of two elements while the products of the second two examples are called ternary compounds since they are made up of three elements each. Another type of chemical reactions is decomposition reactions, which is the opposite for synthesis reactions. Here we should have only one reactant regardless of the number of the products. An example on this, the decomposition of water by the use of electricity to produce hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. After balancing, as you can see, here we have only one reactant, so it's a decomposition reaction. Another example, the decomposition of calcium carbonate by the use of heat to give calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Here, as you can see, we have only one reactant, so it's a decomposition reaction. Our third type of chemical reactions is combustion. And as you know, combustion needs oxygen. Here we have the combustion of methane, and since methane, it's a hydrocarbon, which means it's made up of carbon and hydrogen, the product is supposed to be carbon dioxide and water. Then we balance the chemical equation by multiplying the water molecules by two, and then the oxygen molecules by two, and now the reaction is balanced. Another example, combustion of ethanol with oxygen also produces carbon dioxide and water. To balance it, we multiply the water molecules by three, carbon dioxide by two, and oxygen molecules by three. As you noticed from our two examples, that one of the reactants is oxygen gas, while the products are carbon dioxide and water. And I think this will be the case for most of our combustion reactions, since most of the compounds that we're going to write combustion reactions for them are carbon-based compounds. One thing to mention before we move to another type is that in these equations, we are dealing with complete combustion. In case of incomplete combustion, we may expect other products like carbon monoxide and carbon, which is called soot. The last type of chemical reactions that I'm going to explain is displacement reactions. And I'm going to start with single displacement reactions. Like the following example, the reaction of copper with silver nitrate to produce silver and copper nitrate. To balance it, we multiply both silver and silver nitrate by 2. And now the equation is balanced. Here, as you can see, copper replaced silver and silver nitrate and produced copper nitrate. That's why we called it single displacement reaction 
since here copper displaced silver. Now what if we add silver to copper nitrate? In fact, in this case, there will be no reaction and this is because of something called activity series, which I'm going to explain in a minute. Activity series, it's something like this, where elements are arranged according to their reactivity from the least reactive to the most reactive. So in this photo, potassium is the most reactive and platinum is the least reactive. So if we add potassium solid to magnesium nitrate, since potassium is higher in the activity series than magnesium, potassium would easily displace magnesium and form potassium nitrate and magnesium solid. Then we balance the chemical reaction by multiplying potassium and potassium nitrate by two. Let's have another example, the reaction of solid calcium with sodium nitrate. And as you can see in the activity series, since sodium is higher than calcium, calcium cannot displace sodium and there will be no reaction. So always before you write the products of a single displacement reaction, you have to check the activity series. If the free metal is more reactive than the metal in the compound, then it would displace it and there will be products. But if the free metal is less reactive than the metal in the compound, there will be no reaction. And by the way, the same case is happening with the nonmetals. If the free nonmetal is more reactive than the nonmetal in the compound, then it would displace it. If the free nonmetal is less reactive than the nonmetal in the compound, there is no reaction. By the way, if you find it difficult to write ionic compounds, I will keep a link in the description that would help you. Now let's talk about double displacement reactions. As we can see in the following example, the reaction of potassium iodide with lead nitrate will produce lead iodide and potassium nitrate. As we can see here from its name, double displacement, here potassium displaced lead and lead displaced potassium. Let's have another example, the reaction of hydrochloric acid with sodium hydroxide to produce water and sodium chloride. Here, the hydrogen from hydrochloric acid took the hydroxide ion from the sodium hydroxide and formed water molecules, while the sodium took the chlorine from the hydrochloric acid and formed sodium chloride. As I mentioned earlier, that I will keep a link in the description showing you how to write ionic formulas. It's very important for you to check that video. And now let me summarize for you the five types of reactions that we took. When we have one product, it's called synthesis reaction. When we have one reactant, it's called decomposition reaction. If in the reactants we have oxygen and in the products we have carbon dioxide and water, then this is a combustion reaction. If in the reactant side we have an element and in the product side we have another element, then this is a single displacement reaction. And finally, if we have a reaction with none of the cases above where ions are swapped, then it's called double displacement reaction. And now you are ready to solve the end of video questions. Please, if you are not, repeat the video again. Otherwise, solve the questions, put your answer in the comments section. If you have any question that I didn't cover in the video, please share it with me in the comments section. Share this video with your friends. Subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for more videos. See you in other videos and good luck.